At some point, everyone with a laser has had this happen. You run a job, everything seems fine, but when you remove it from the machine, you realize that it hasn't cut all the way through. Your options now are limited. You can try to line it back up and run it again, but it's very hard to do that manually, and chances are good that it won't be quite right. So today, we're going to show you how you can use the print and cut feature in Lightburn to realign the file and save the work. Print and Cut is meant to align the output from Lightburn with something that already exists, like a printed sticker, uh, something you made on a CNC machine, a dye sublimation print, uh, and so on. In our case, the project didn't have registration marks in it, so we have to find features in the design that we can use instead. Now, this file contains a number of sharp corners that will be easy to line up the laser with, so I'm going to pick two of those on opposite sides of the file and mark them. The marks themselves just have to be an object that you can select and align with points in the file that you're going to use to register with. Now, we don't want these marks to be burned into the project, so I'm just going to draw them using a tool layer, uh, here, T2. Um, the marks can be as simple as just a circle or a square, so I'm just going to draw a 10 millimeter square to use for this file, but it could be any shape at all. Now, once it's drawn, change to selection mode by hitting escape, and grab the center drag handle so that the square will center snap to other shapes in the file as you drag it around. Now I'm going to put my first marker here on this corner, and you'll notice that as I drag the square over that corner, my cursor changes and this square snaps into position centered on that corner point. That's what you want. Now it's important to use points that are relatively far apart. Uh, the ideal points in this file are these over here on the opposite side of the design from the first one. Um, if the points are too close, any misalignment between the position of the marker and the laser will be amplified as you get farther away. So you can see here, if I move this point just a little bit, the opposite side of the file moves quite a lot. Uh, if I choose a point farther away, uh, like over here on this side, moving the point a little doesn't move the file nearly as much. So I've placed the job back in the machine, and here I've done it at a fairly significant angle just to show how well this all works. So the first thing you need to do is point the laser at one of your chosen locations. Now in my case, I'm going to start with this corner here, and using the control panel on the machine or the jog buttons in Lightburn, move the laser to align it with the chosen spot on the design as accurately as you can. Once you get close, drop the jog speed down to about one or two millimeters per second so that you can dial it in even closer and fine tune it as best you can. You'll notice that the red dot mark on my system here dims when it's directly over the existing cut line and that can help quite a bit. With the laser positioned at the marked corner, go to Tools, Print and Cut, and start the new Print and Cut wizard. The first option that you're given is to set the first target position. So with the laser positioned at this point on the job, select the marker and click Set First Target Position. You'll notice a couple of things have now changed. First, a circle appears around the marker location to show that Lightburn has recorded it, and the wizard page changes to show the next option, Set Second Target Position. So now we have to jog the laser to the second marker location on the design. So I've jogged the laser close to this point at a normal jogging speed, and now I'm adjusting the control speed down to one millimeter per second so that I can fine tune the location here. Um, again, get it lined up as accurately as you can with your chosen corner, and when you're ready to move on, flip back over to Lightburn. Now, back in Lightburn, select the second target marker and click the Set Second Target Position button. You'll see a circle appear around the marker showing that Lightburn has recorded its position, and the wizard options change again, now showing you the two ways that you can align your output, with scaling or without. When using it to recover a job like this, you know that the scale is identical. Uh, presumably you're sending the same file, so you choose the no scaling option. And when clicked, the wizard disappears and the target markers show two new circles around them showing that the print and cut feature is ready to go. You'll also see that the start from mode has changed to absolute coordinates, and this is necessary because the software has to be able to send the job to an exact place on the laser. 
you'll also see print and cut and unscaled next to the ready indicator here showing you that you are in print and cut mode. If you preview the job, you'll notice that the orientation is different than the project itself, and that's because it's being aligned to match the item in the laser. Uh, but it's a quick way to verify that the print and cut feature is doing what you want. Uh, at this point, all that's left to do is run it. So you'll notice the software has sent the job exactly lined up with the existing file that I cut. Now, this was taken out of the machine, held in my hands, and moved. And Print and Cut has allowed me to run the same file in exactly the same place after moving the work. And there you have it. So hopefully you've learned something that can save you a bit of trouble in the future.